Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another day of question and answer. Yesterday was Rhea Jones. Uh, today it is Darren Day. He's just getting ready to uh, chat to us and answer all your questions that you've been putting to him throughout uh, the week and throughout the past couple of weeks uh, here on the Facebook page or Instagram. Uh, once again, thank you for tuning in. I am Adam Smith. I'm here to ask the questions that you have been sending in. Uh, there's some good ones in there. I've got them here. There's some very, very good. Now, uh, already coming up on our Facebook, we've got loads of people uh, coming in saying hello to us. Uh, let's see if we can go through a few of these whilst we're waiting for Darren to just uh, log in and join the chat. Uh, hello to Julie, Deborah, uh, Michelle. Uh, who else is in there? We've got Jordan, uh, Julie, uh, Deborah, uh, Wendy. Uh, Michelle, there's, there's, there's plenty. There's plenty there. Uh, so thank you for all your questions coming in. Don't forget tomorrow there's another member of the cast that we're chatting to. We'll give you more details uh, on that later on. So first of all, let's get to it. Uh, let's get him on the screen. I believe he's there. Darren, can you hear me, buddy? Darren, can you hear me, pal? Oh, moment of truth. He's there. We can see him. Darren, can you hear me? Darren. So this is what you, you see Darren gets up to before an interview when he can't hear the people asking the questions. Darren. Darren. It's Darren. Anyone? Any, can, can you hear him? I can't hear him. Darren. Hello. Oh, we'll get there. I mean, this is better than yesterday. I mean, considering yesterday we had uh, lots of issues and we were very late, but um, today we will we'll get there. Uh, fingers crossed. Uh, once again, thank you all for all your questions. I know we're all very excited for this massive concert, Joseph, and the amazing all-star cast concert. And of course, we had Rhea Jones on yesterday. Uh, what a fabulous, fantastic woman. Loved her. Loved chatting to her. She was she, just like chatting to a mate. She was fantastic. Very, very nice. Uh, we'll be... Um, Looking forward to seeing her as part of this whole extravaganza that's going to be happening soon. Uh, remember, it is for charity, so if you do want to donate, you can do. Uh, details are on our Facebook page and Instagram. Alternatively, if you go to justgiving.com forward slash fundraising forward slash Joseph Dream Concert, uh, that is the website you can go to to uh, be able to donate to this charity. What this great cause. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Yes, I also think he needs to put his ear pods in. Um, Shelly, good. I'm glad it's not just me that can't hear him. Uh, Jane, I think he is on mute. Can you see me now? I can see you and I can hey. hear you, Darren. How are you, my friend? All right, mate. How are you? I'm very well. Uh, lovely to see you. How are you coping through all this? Well, listen, these, these are crazy times we're living through, aren't they? Yeah. You know, and I think we all, you know, I think there's been, a, I think to be honest with you, I was saying to somebody yesterday that there seems to be a lovely feeling of camaraderie, though. Mm. You know, because we're all in this together. You know, when you, I know you have to talk two feet, two two meters apart, but people, you, you tend to talk, and people talk to you. It's just, I don't know. It seems to be like a little, you know, when there's a crisis, you know, we pull yeah. together. So, um, you know, I guess everyone's just doing the best they can, really. Yeah, and, and same here. But how are you doing? Yeah, good. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's w when you get to places, uh, you know, times like this, it brings out the best and I think it brings out the worst in people as well. But luckily, yeah. we have technology and we have lovely gentlemen like yourself that are willing to jump <laughs> on board and it's in yeah. your soul and it's passion to entertain. Uh, just like Rhea when we were chatting to her yesterday, by the way, she sends her love. Oh, who did you speak to? Rhea Jones. Oh, Rhea, she's lovely. She uh, she sends a love. Oh, so, bless her. Oh, and I, I send all mine back too. Yeah, definitely. Good. I'm sure she'll be watching this, and she's excited to be performing alongside you in this amazing event. Are you ready to get straight into the questions, Darren? Yes. Sweet. Right. I'm a little nervous about the questions, but I'm ready. <laughs> Don't be. I'm sure all your fans have been in touch and asked great questions. So first of all, obviously we've got unprecedented times. Julie Hinken wants to know: Is Footloose? Likely to turn, likely to return later on in the year. Yes, I mean I, I don't think there's any question at all. Is it, it's not been cancelled. It's just a postponement at the moment. I mean we we can't confirm dates obviously with the current climate, but at the moment we're sort of looking at opening towards the back end of the summer. Now we were we were due to open in Wimbledon on the 28th of April. Um, which obviously, you know, yeah. we were about four days away from rehearsal starting when lockdown happened. Um, 
But at the moment, it looks like back end of the summer will be will be the new opening date. Please God, everything goes. Fingers right. crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, Jenny Beglet, would you ever be dunning the line cloth again? <laughs> I think it would be in the interest of others if I didn't. <laughs> You've got to understand that this is a 51-year-old body now as opposed to a... Well, I mean, well, I, I was quite... Really, I mean, the last time... The first time I played Joseph, I was 24. 27 years ago today, I opened at the London Palladium. But um, the last time I played Joseph would have been in 2005. So I would have been in my 30s by that point. Um, but I think 51... I think that is pushing the realms of imagination for me to actually do the long cloth again. You know, I, I, but... I think some of your fans may disagree I, if you go, <laughs> in, in the comments. Well, well, do you know what? Never say never. Exactly. Never say never. <laughs> and I think with times like this, if you're just eager to get back on stage, I think you'd be grateful to just do anything. Well, after this, yeah, you just want I to mean, get that perform. Absolutely, uh, and and I mean, it is genuinely a real. Um, a real pleasure to be involved with this because Joseph gave me a career you know there is no question you know from my first night at Joseph at the London Palladium from that I I got you know the tour the world tour of Joseph Nigel Lithgow was in the audience Nasty Nigel I don't know if you remember Nasty Nigel Lithgow who was sort of head of entertainment at London Weekend Television he came backstage and offered me a three-year deal with ITV Simon Cowell came backstage in the days when he wore his trousers in the right place and also <laughs> when he wasn't famous himself and offered me a three-year deal with RCA Records. It was just, you know, it was just the most incredible experience of my life, you know, and it really did, it just changed my life literally overnight. And I'm, the, you know. Yeah, the best spring bard ever. The best. I think the thing was, was Joseph was such a huge, huge show in London. Um, and because that you know Jason Donovan had opened the show at the very very height of his fame, he'd just come over from Australia. He was the biggest thing. And then when Phil Schofield took over a year later, you know Phil, well still now his profile is huge. Um, oh, is that the three of us? That's yeah, that? PSL. There you go. You haven't changed yeah. a bit, Darren. <laughs> no, but I am the one on the right. All oh, right, that explains it then. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the day. That's the day that Philip handed the dream coat to me on the steps of the London Palladium. Um, but I think because Phil was very high profile, so you had this story of a high profile person taking over from a high profile person. So when Phil was leaving, the kind of the uh, the, the general feeling in the West End was there is going to be some Hollywood star coming to play Joseph just to top yeah. that story. And suddenly this unknown kid from... Uh, a, a, an Essex council estate got the gig um, and fortunately for me that Andrew Lloyd Webber decided to go with the different story and do the unknown takes over from the big star to make it a different sort of spin but I just I, I, I really do owe my whole career to that decision you know and, uh, and I will never forget I, I auditioned twice and I was in I was in Marks and Spencers in Hampstead I'll never forget <laughs> Gold is green, actually, if I'm going to be specific. Uh, two days after my recall audition, and my manager, Peter Powell, at the time, phoned me up and he said, the dream coach yours, mate. And I will never forget those words. And whenever I say those words and remember that moment, I still go a bit goosebumps. Yeah. It, it was my dream gig, you know? It really was. And it, and it was such a huge show that, yeah, you're right, it just it just catapulted me you know, in a way that I don't think any other theatre show could have done at that point in time. You know? Definitely iconic. And also your role as well. Now, you mentioned in there Jason Donovan, obviously being one of the people to take uh, his role. Did you stand in for Jason Donovan in 1990? He still wants to know. No, no. Uh, Jason opened in... If, I, if I'm right, Jason opened, I think, in 1991 at the Palladium. And then Phil Schofield took over in 1992. And I was at both of their opening nights, ironically enough, obviously having no idea in the world that I would one day play that part. And I can remember on both nights sitting there thinking, this is one of the best shows I've ever seen. And I do remember thinking, because I'd played Joseph at school, <laughs> I sat there thinking, 
God, I would absolutely love to be a part of the show one day. Never believing that, you know, two years after Jason and one year after Philip's opening night, that yeah. it would be my opening night. It, 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 was a, it was like a dream come true, mate. And I know sometimes that can sound a little bit, perhaps, like the cliche police are going to come and arrest you. Yeah. But <laughs> it really was. It really was the most incredible most incredible thing, really, that's happened in my career, really. Now, you did say it is, of course, 27 years since you did start at the London Palladium. Uh, Joanna Vowles wants to know, what is your favourite memory of being on stage over the last 27 years? Whoa. Oh, man, that's a really tough question. Um, there have been so many, so many roles that I've been lucky enough to play. Um, and some of them, for me, were a little bit of a tick-off box from when I was a kid Joseph being one of them and uh, and Danny Zuko in Greece being another one I mean Greece was yeah. one of my favourite movies when I was a kid but if I had to say one moment and I think it was because of the genre of shows that I'd done up to this point between 93 and 99 I'd done very family kind of shows you know and the romantic lead type of parts and then in 1999 Richard O'Brien offered me Frankenfurter in the Rocky Horror Show, yeah, um, and it was it was like it was like taking the shackles off. Yeah, it was just like being given. Can't Blanche to do what he came into my dressing room on the. Oh, he's froze. See, technology it's only great. I mean, we are in the middle of asking him uh, about his favourite memory on stage over the last 27 years. 27 years. Uh, and we're looking to be having him as part of this new Joseph uh, amazing all-star concert. Hopefully we'll have him back on screen very, very soon. This happened yesterday with Rhea. She came straight back. Uh, we're not sure what it is. I think, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Uh, it could be, could be anything. It could be anything. Uh, not 5G though. Don't go blaming it on that. It's not true. Uh, so we're halfway through asking him the questions that you've been uh, putting forward to us. Uh, here on our Facebook page and on Instagram as well. Thank you so much. There's a picture there of Joseph, uh, well, of Darren dressed up as Joseph, very colourful. Uh, he's looking very dapper. And we saw the picture of him earlier on the steps. Oh, there he is, uh, on the on the steps of the uh, Palladium, handing over the the coat of many colours. Oh, hiya, Darren. Welcome back. I, I have no idea what happened. I mean, it, I swear, I mean, I am a technophobe, but I promise you I didn't touch it. One day I might get to interview somebody who's not a technophobe. It might, might be oh, no. great. You need to pick on someone younger than me then, all right? <laughs> so we were asking about your favourite memory of being on stage over the last 27 yeah. years. You left yeah. it with the, the Rocky Horror. And you I said think, that, that at that yeah. point you were, your shackles were cut. I think that's what it was, was that Richard O'Brien came into my room, uh, dressing room on the opening night. And he said, my boy, you can pretty much say and do anything you want on that stage there are no holds barred whatever gets shouted at, at you because obviously you have those interaction moments in the rocky horror show with the audience he said just give 10 times back what you get so i think for me at that point in time it was such a a transition of 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 roles for me that i loved every second of that show so i mean definitely one of my favorite moments and richard o'brien came on stage at the end but I'll tell you another moment that's just come to my head was the opening night of We Will Rock You in Edinburgh when we all sing Bohemian Rhapsody at the end. The opening night, Roger Taylor came wheeled forward on his drums. Wow. My mate Brian May came out with the guitar, played the guitar solo of Bohemian Rhapsody. So I'm stood there with everyone else singing Bohemian Rhapsody, which is one of my all-time classic songs. Um, looking to the side of me, with Brian playing the guitar, Roger on the drums, thinking, actually, this is definitely a pinch me moment. And and there have been a few of those, but I mean, those are certainly moments for me that, that stand out, you know. Somebody saying, uh, yeah, Wendy Berman said you were great in White Christmas. Oh, thank you. Was was that a, an iconic moment? Did, you, did anything mishap happen there? Was that a, a special moment for you? It was special. The only mishaps that happened were probably my dance steps in rehearsals. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, the dancing side of things does not come easy. I have to sort of work much harder on that than, than the others. Um, 
But that was a great, you know, I loved playing that role. You know, I can remember watching the film with Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye when I was a kid. And it's a very, very special show. I got to work at the West Yorkshire Playhouse, which is an incredible venue. Brilliant venue, yeah. And Nikolai Foster, who directed, is one of my favourite directors. Uh, my mate Nick Winston, who choreographed, who is now a massive director in his own right as well. Um, we, we just had an, an amazing team. Oliver Thompson, who played next to me. Emma Williams, who played opposite me. The, you know, we're talking like very, very high calibre of people. And it was just so lovely to be doing that. And what else was lovely about that was my daughter was at an age. She was quite, we lived quite close to Leeds at that point. And so the school had a big school party come, a few coaches. Yeah. So my daughter got to sit in the audience with all her school friends watching dad on stage. And that was a lovely, lovely moment for me. And, and I guess for her too, you know. So very happy memories of that, mate. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, what is your favourite theatre to perform in? Lynn Davies wants to know. Okay, Lynn. Um, whoa, man, there were such, there were such beautiful theatres around the country. If I had to pick, the Palladium will always be so special to me because it's where it began. But I tell you, certainly one of my favourites is the Bradford Alhambra. Beautiful venue. Just a beautiful yeah. venue. And I, I did pantomime there with Billy Pierce a few years ago, and um, I've done a few shows there. It's just, it, for me, like that theatre is how a theatre should look. Same with the Palladium, you know. So I, I guess in London, the Palladium, but on tour, probably, probably the Alhambra. They're both theatres that uh, stand that stood the test of time and just are iconic and just, just, just brilliant venue. Once you walk in there, you feel the nostalgia and the, just the atmosphere automatically, don't you? Yeah, and I think also what's special about both those theatres, they're big theatres with a big capacity audience, but somehow they feel, they still sort of somehow feel intimate. And yeah. you sort of feel that you are, you know, that you're sort of with the audience. Some theatres, you know, you've got the, the, the orchestra pit and there may be quite a, a distance between you and yeah. the first row. But with both of those theatres, though they have a big capacity, they feel very intimate. Now, Lindsay Davis, uh, what are you doing to get through lockdown besides, obviously, rehearsing for Joseph? Cutting my hair a lot. <laughs> I, I've noticed that's very... Where have you gone for that? It's very short. Well, I, I had what they call the undercut done. So it's sort of shaved up at the sides and the back and underneath here, and then you keep the length on top. Uh, and I had this cut done about three weeks before lockdown, and the guy that cut it for the first time said... I just have to let you know this is a very, very high maintenance haircut. You need to come back sort of once a week or once every 10 days to keep it looking sharp. And then we had lockdown. So I went and bought some clippers. So every four days, I, I do the sides and then my girlfriend does the back. So it's a lot, there's been a lot of hair cutting. Um, I could probably tell you the script from back to front of every single episode of Killing Eve because I... Oh, yeah. yeah. Myself and my girlfriend, really, we have binge-watched box sets. But I tell you what a silver lining has been for me on this. I was due, as I said earlier, to start rehearsals for Footloose and I would have been on tour and I would have missed my children's Easter holiday. I would have been working. But because of what's happened... You know, the kids have come to stay and we had sort of Easter egg, you know, Easter egg stuff here and, you know, Easter egg hunt here. And I just got to spend a few days with my children that I would not have got had, had this not have happened. So as tragic as everything is, for me, it was like it was lovely just to get to see the kids at a time when I, when I otherwise wouldn't have done, you know. Oh, that's lovely. Daddy Darren. Dad, Daddy Daycare. Daddy Daycare. Darren Daycare. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you can go into after this uh, oh, I, have to. I know don't we all <laughs> what is your favourite role that you have played uh, Anna Stevens wants to know again a really good question Joseph will always be very special um, Summer Holiday was special to me because it, it was the first show taken over from I uh, taken over Joseph from Philip, I took over Copacabana from Gary Wilmot. It was sort of the first show, big show that I had, that I'd sort of created, if you like. And I was on tour with that for two and a half years. But if I had to pick one, if I was put on the spot to pick one, Billy Bigelow in Carousel, it was quite a, I, I hadn't done that kind of really straight theatre at that point. 
Um, it's the most beautiful story, the most beautiful score, Rodgers and Hammerstein. It, it's a real classic and it's a real tearjerker and it was just a wonderful part to play and I got to work with the most incredible cast and Wayne Sleep choreographed it. Obviously, you don't get any better than Wayne and so I, I would probably say Billy Bigelow, Carousel. Yeah. Good choice, good choice. Now, you're obviously um, 27 years since starting in Joseph in the Palladium. You've gone on to do massive things you know, I'm a sled, Big Brother, many other touring musicals as well. And you started off as a red coat. Uh, Trevor, Trevor Davis wants to know, do you still suffer from nerves before a show? Uh, now again, that is a really good question, Trevor. Um, yes, I think will be the answer. Someone said to me many, many years ago, when you don't have those butterflies and those nerves, specific, definitely before a first night. I mean, obviously, once the show is up and running... Yeah. Then, then okay. You, you, you know, the nerves go, and it's a job. But certainly, first performance and first press night, I always have the nerves. And as I said, someone said to me once, when those nerves go, it is probably the time to stop doing what you're doing because I think it's it's possibly that that gives you that little edge and the adrenaline. So I I kind of deal with the nerves, and I think if the nerves aren't there, I get nervous. Yeah. <laughs> So much wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that, Trevor. Now, yes, uh, yeah, where did you train to be an actor? Josh uh, Dur uh, Durnall wants to know. Josh, mate. Now, this is the question I used to dread in rehearsals in the very, very early part of my career because I, I didn't train. Um, I, I, I was a professional snooker player as a teenager. I played professional snooker for two years, but I'd always sort of, I'd always sung as a party piece. And, you know, I, I think when I played snooker, I, I was a little bit of an exhibitionist. Like I kind of, you know, I, I guess I always played to the crowd. So there was always a performer in me, uh, but I didn't train. I did the club circuit between when I, when I stopped playing snooker, I won Opportunity Knox with Bob Monkhouse when it was renamed Bob says Opportunity Knox a million years ago. Um, <laughs> And then for the next five years, I did the club circuit, you know, as, as a stand-up, as a singer. And then Joseph happened. But I do consider that, you know, when you do that club circuit for that long, it's really, really good grounding, I think. And I guess I always took my grounding from that. But what I have tried to do over the years, when I've been lucky enough to work with such incredible, an incredible calibre of performers... I stand in the wings and I watch and I learn Yeah, because you can learn something from everybody. And certainly the, 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 the amazing performers I've been lucky enough to work with, I, I, I watch them and I, I nick a bit. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of, a bit of it from everybody. And make yeah. Yeah. I, I think, you know, there's so many people that I admire and I think it's okay to sort of say, well, I like that. I like what they do there. And I like what that person does there. And I like, you know, so, yeah, I think I think we look. We're all inspired by somebody, aren't we? Or by by certain yeah. people, and I and I, I still continue to be inspired by people. Brill, Millie Lanson wants to know what is the most challenging thing about being an actor. Ah, again, these are good questions this afternoon. They're uh, tough today, aren't they? They're hitting you hard. <laughs> on a personal level, certainly over the 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 years when. Since I've had children, I would say the most challenging thing personally has been being away from my kids so much. I sort of missed out on a lot of, you know, because at certain ages with children, they, they make such changes and adapt and grow so quickly over days sometimes yeah. that I, I sort of regret not, you know, missing certain things, maybe missing school plays that I should have been at, but work has not allowed it. Um, so that on a personal level, but I, I, I've kind of really got bitten by the, by, by the bug of acting, specifically screen acting a few years ago. And I've done a few movies and I did Hollyoaks for a while and I've done various dramas. Um, and sometimes if you're asked to play a particularly sinister character, yeah. I, I do like to do the thing of sort of really researching and trying to get into the head of that person. And there have been a couple of characters that I've played over the, year, the years that... <laughs> let's just say, are unsavoury with a capital unsavoury. 
So <laughs> sometimes trying to get into the head of someone that you're playing, uh, that can be a bit challenging. And sometimes without again without sounding too actorish and lovey, sometimes if you're playing a sort of a traumatic sort of part, then that's quite hard to leave behind, either at the theatre or, or or at the studio. Um, so that can be challenging, you know. Brilliant. Um, how was it when you hosted your own show? You spoke about, obviously, London Weekend Television. You bet. How was that from oh. stage to screen? Yeah, it was amazing, really. Um, I remember the day that my manager called me and he said, oh, I mean, you bet was a huge thing. Bruce Forsyth had started it. I think he did the first three series and then uh, Matthew Kelly took over for yeah. five years. Very, very big show, one that I watched. My manager called me one day and they said, they want, me, they want you to do You Bet. So I said, oh, I love that show. I'd love to go on there, thinking they meant as one of the panel. Yeah. I said, when, which day do they want me to do that? And he said, oh, no, this is going to be like a few weeks. And I was like, well, what do you mean? He said, no, they want you to host it. And I can remember I was doing Cobra Cabana in London and I can remember thinking, why? How? <laughs> <laughs> How have I got this gig, you know? Um, and it was an abs- it was lovely. And on my opening day, the first day's day of filming, I had a card from Matthew and a card from Bruce on the day, and it, I st- I've still got them somewhere. Um, but it was an in- it was incredible to take over such an iconic Saturday night show. I absolutely yeah. loved presenting. I really did. It was a brilliant show. Sure. Absolutely Thank iconic. You. Uh, right in the music, Joseph. Uh, the music, Joseph. Sorry, uh, is there any character that you would like to play besides Joseph? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? what? One of the parts that I really wanted to play that I that I didn't get to play was Joe Gillis in Sunset Boulevard. That was always my little bee in the bonnet. I'm too old for that now. <laughs> but I'll tell you what I would like to have a crack at while we're talking about the the Joseph thing is. I would love to play the Pharaoh one day. Wow. I'm a massive, massive Elvis fan. I love the character of the Pharaoh. And I think just as, as, as Jason Donovan has done and sort of gone from playing Joseph in his younger years to now playing the Pharaoh at the Palladium, yeah, I, I would love to have a crack at the Pharaoh one day. Good choice. I, I'd like to see that. That'd be I'd interesting. Be nice. I'd just love to don that outfit, you know. Everything. Uh, Josh Large uh, wants to know, what is your favourite all-time song? Oh, Josh. Uh, well, we spoke briefly about it earlier. I, I, I would have to say, I think I would have to say Bohemian Rhapsody. I just, th- I mean, you know, everything that could have been said about it has been said, but... Um, it's just a genius of a song, and I'm a massive Queen fan. I'm lucky enough to be, uh, to, you know, to call Brian May a friend. I know Roger as well, but Brian I've known for many years. He's one of the loveliest, loveliest men. He's, when you see him in the flesh and you talk to him, he's the most unlikely rock star. He looks yeah. like a rock star, but he's so down to earth, you know. Um, he, he, you know, it, it yeah, it, it just, yeah, so... Um, and it's, you know, some, you know when you're a kid and you get to work with, I mean, even the first time I sang with Cliff Richard on Summer Holiday, you know, that there, 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 there's been things that have happened. I played with Elvis Presley's guitarist at Café de Paris in 2002. You know, there have, there have been some incredible moments. And I think moments like that, it's always important to just try and take it in, you know. Sometimes yeah. things happen in our life and it all happens so quickly that we sort of, we don't maybe sit and just take it in. But, yeah. Yeah, I like it. Paula Odell, knowing what you know, what advice would you give your younger self just starting out? <laughs> what wouldn't I advise myself? <laughs> uh, what advice would you give? Keep it clean. What would I give? Well... Uh, in, do you know what I would say? Enjoy every moment. I know that sounds a little bit simple to say, but I would just say enjoy every moment. I I would always say follow your dreams. You know, I mean, 
I was taken to the London Palladium at five years old by my grandfather to see Morecambe and Wise. And my granddad was a, a, he was a musical act, vaudeville act. And um, from the age of five, my ambition was to, to start the London Palladium. And from being at school playing Joseph, I would always wanted to play Joseph in a professional production. And that, now those two things happened for me in one go. And if someone would, someone would have told me that that was going to happen before, I would never have believed it. So I would say, stay focused, follow your dreams and enjoy what you do. Really. I think that's, that's great advice. Absolutely great advice. <laughs> now, you've played many, many roles across the years, you know. 10 or 20, obviously. Um, which, one, which one would you relate to the most, Darren? Out of oh, all the characters? man. I better not say Frankfurt are here. Well, I, this is um, a thing. You mentioned that earlier. Is it, you know, no shackles, being able to do what you want? Or is it more of a calm, collective, I know what I'm doing kind of role? Oh, that's really good. Certainly in my younger days, I would have gone for the Frankfurt type of thing. <laughs> um, but, no, you know, my life... I, you know, look, we all grow up. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm too old to party now for a start. But, um, oh, what would I relate to? Who would I relate to? Uh, I mean, I suppose really, I quite like the Billy Bigelow character. He was a bit of a misunderstood man, um, a bit lost. We've all been a bit misunderstood or a bit lost at certain points in time so um yeah i would probably say billy bigelow really thank yeah, you very I, much i don't go the same way as he went in the storyline but you know. time will yeah. tell what it, time will time tell, will tell <laughs> me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right finally we'll give you one last question then we'll let you get off and obviously get rehearsing ready for this amazing concert that's happening uh backstage riders do you have any? <laughs> What's in it? That comes from Daniela. Hey, Daniela. No, I am incredibly easy to deal with these days. There may well have been riders in the past, uh, way back. But you know what happens a lot of time, and especially with record companies, when you sign to a record company, a lot of the time the riders are put forward by the people that look after you. I know there are sometimes, there were a couple of times back in the day when, I remember a, 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 a tour manager saying to me, oh, we've got, a, it was, it was like, it was something random, like Ribenas, right? Ribena what? cartons. We've got Elo's 30 Ribena cartons that, you know, is in your rider. And I was like, don't even drink Ribena. I did. <laughs> I mean, I like Ribena, but I didn't want 30 of them in my fridge, really. <laughs> But um, but no, I I promise you, I do not, I don't, I don't have a rider. I go into a theatre or into onto a film set or a TV studio. I do my job and I go because we're all just doing a job, aren't we? It's all a job. We're all just making a living as best we yeah. can. And so I don't. I hope maybe there was a time when. I think sometimes when fame and fortune is thrown at you, maybe you have to adapt to that and perhaps yeah. you don't behave in a way that you'd be particularly proud of for the rest of your life. But trust me, I'm just a working class guy that happens to sing and act. So I, yeah, no riders for me. Which is why you're adored by so many fans, Darren, which is why we keep <laughs> getting all these questions and all these people are watching, but we'll squeeze in one more. And sure, this is man. Quite, this is quite relevant with obviously Joseph and the amazing all-star cast concert. Can you name all the colours of the coat in order? I knew you were going to do that to me. It's just literally come up on my screen now. So, final one. Let's let's go out on a bang, Darren. Let's get it. I couldn't even tell you if you were right or wrong on this one. <laughs> it was red and yellow and green and brown, scarlet and black and ochre and peach. Oh, no. Oh. The, the actual answer is no. No. But we got and, some of it. Well, I... The beginning bit, but um, that actually was when I think back to rehearsals, that was the one thing that everyone's like, oh, got to nail that, you know. Um, so, I mean, I guess, look, if anyone ever does want me to don the loincloth again, I guess I need to really swat up on those colors. Yeah, get on Wikipedia, get it googled. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Darren, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Thank you so much, buddy. 
It's been a pleasure talking to you too. And I really have to say to everybody, I'm absolutely delighted to be a part of this. I think it's going to be a really, really special thing. For me, it's double poignant because it's happening on the same, you know, around the same time as I, I opened in Joseph. It's for an incredible cause. The Acting for Others charity, you know, and it couldn't be more, it couldn't be more symbolic right now. Yeah. Financially and emotionally. Just on every level, delighted to be a part of it again. I'm singing these songs again, and um, I look forward to everyone seeing it. And we're delighted to have you on board, Darren. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, some family time. And of course, remember, it is for charity this, so please go to justgiving.com, fundraising forward slash Joseph Dream Concert. Darren, I don't know if you can still hear me, but you've gone it. quiet. Can you, can you not hear me? I can't hear you anymore. Oh, well. We're done anyway, Darren. We're done. It's finished. Is it done? It's done. Oh, okay. Mate. Cheers, Darren. It's all right, yeah? Perfect, mate. And we'll be back with you tomorrow, two o'clock, for mate. another interview with another member of the cast. Take care, stay safe. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. We'll start Joseph with the difference with um, the one and the only, Mr. Cliff Richard. I fancy I close my eyes, drew back the curtain to see for certain what I thought I knew. Mr. Neil Diamond, far, far away, yes. Someone was leaving, but the world. Sleeping, who any dream will do. It's the David Essex. I wore my coat, yeah. With golden lining, bright, bright colors shining, yeah. Wonderful and new, Mr. George Michael. And in the east, oh yeah. The dawn was breaking And the world was waking In a dream world The one and the only Mr. David Bowie A crush of drums A flash of light My golden coat It flew out of sight The colors faded into darkness I was left alone the one and the only, Mr. Max Bygraves. How oh, may I return you? I too do like a loin cloth, yeah. I want to tell you a story. The light is dimming, all right, yeah. And the dream is too. Mr. Stevie Wonder. The world and I. I we are still waiting. We're still hesitating. Thank you.